Alex Gray, we haven't seen you since a uh, flight back from the Super Bowl in February. You guys hung over, weren't you? We were, we were struggling big yeah, time. Yeah. yeah, I was fine though. You were, you were in great <laughs> shape. Um, my body was in bits and I tried to steal your foam roller without actually that, seeing it was that you. That was it, that was, well you're just embarrassing me like that saying I carry my foam roller everywhere but that's, that's why. To yeah, see you got to keep in like top you, condition yeah. haven't yeah, you? Yeah true, true apparently, <laughs> apparently. Talking of that, how's things? Good, very good. Um, just come back from the OTAs and minicamp, fresh off signing a new two year deal so um, yeah things are going good. Managing to keep a job, which is uh, it's not the easiest thing to do in the NFL. So, um, yeah, just uh, things are going good so far, you know. How long was OTAs? Ten weeks. Yeah, ten weeks. So, uh, different phases. So, you uh, you know, to begin with, it's pretty crazy. I've never seen anything like it where you can only be in the facility and on the training grounds for two or three hours a day. You know, your coaches aren't allowed to talk to you. They're not allowed to be seen with you. So, uh, it's basically just con conditioning and speed work and all that type of stuff. So did that for a couple of weeks and then we started getting, finally getting into the football stuff because we've got a, a couple of new coaches. So um, it was important for us to get that off the ground. And uh, what, what does a typical day look like uh, for OTAs as in turning up at the facility in the morning and run us through that? Yeah, so it's, it's not quite as hectic as training camp, which, you know, notoriously could be a, a six till nine at night job. But um, yeah, I mean, we're coming in at eight, we're lifting in the morning, weight session, um, and then we've got meetings and then we'll go out on the field and do a, do a practice. Um, all in all, we're kind of there from eight till eight till three, I'd say, and then you're obviously there doing extra work um, because you, you you've got to do that to stay ahead of the competition. You know, everyone else is doing it, so um, you say you it says on the schedule you're finishing at three, but you might be there till five. Um, are you are you the type of guy that would get there early in the morning? I mean, obviously you've had the elite background before you then came into the NFL already uh, with your with your rugby days. Are you the type to turn up hours early, a couple of hours early? Yeah, that's that's kind of my style. Um, kind of got into a routine when I joined the sevens team about trying to be the first one in and the last one out um, and I thought if I was ever going to have to apply that to another situation it was going to be here in the NFL and um, that's what I've done you know and I'm, I'm sure that's a, a big reason why I'm still still kicking around going into my third season so uh, it's something I'll be continuing to do because um, you know I mean that's that's what I enjoy I enjoy trying to get better um, I enjoy trying to be the pre best professional I can be because the uh, reality is, you know, maybe in 10 years' time, I won't be able to do it anymore, you know? So um, all those days where, oh, I wish I'd woken up a bit earlier, I wish I'd stayed a bit longer, um, I don't want those to come back and haunt me, you know? So uh, that's why I'm just trying to do everything I can. That's brilliant. So you can be a leader in, in the gym in that sense as well. Who, who joins you in there early doors? Uh, one of the other tight ends, uh, I'm not sure if many of you will know, but Logan Paulson. So he's played in the league for, for 10 years, and, you know, he kind of made me check myself on, on what I was doing work-wise. You know, he's... I lived with him this preseason. I thought if um, you know if I'm going to get the very mo the very most out of myself, he'd be a great person to live with. You know, I'm always racing him to be the first one in, and uh, always trying to find extra stuff to do to beat him to be the last one there. So uh, you know, he's been a, a really good influence um, on my career. You know, he's he's typically a blocking tight end, um, and that's something that I coming into the game really struggled with. Um, so working with him and living with him and, and just picking his brains on everything, you know, has it, really helped my game. And uh, you know, hugely thankful that I've, I've met him on this journey. You know. And obviously, where, where are you looking? I mean, the receiving core in that team is hugely exciting. Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Austin Hooper, and hopefully yourself. What, what type of tight end, you know, will we see when, when you hit the field? Um, an all-rounder, I guess. You know, there's you, you do get guys who are, are just receiving tight ends or are just blocking tight ends. Um, but speaking to the coaches and, and you know, physically what, I, what I'm kind of capable of, I want to be that all-round guy, you know. Um, as I as I was saying before, catching passes and running routes came naturally, and uh, you know, so that was that's kind of my X factor. But um, you know, being able to, you know, we're, we're, the Atlanta Falcons, we've got some good running backs. You know, we got um, Freeman coming back now. So to set up the pass, you got to you got to use the run. So if you can't if you can't block for the Atlanta Falcons, you probably won't be there. Um, so it's yeah, all-rounder, um, playing on special teams as well, just trying to be as useful as possible. You know, um, it's a lot of work trying to trying to cover all bases, but. That's what I wanted. I wanted the challenge, and uh, if you're going to do it, you may as well do it all. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it though. Throwing yourself into it. Um, third year starting this season for you now. Is there anyone you're modelling yourself on? Obviously, you played in the league for a little. Oh, sorry, you've been around the NFL for a little while now. Is there anyone you're modelling yourself on as a player? Uh, I, I quite like. It. It's the same when I was when I was coming through in the rugby. I, I used to. I loved taking little bits of other people's games. Um, so you know, someone like Zach Ertz, um, you know, Kelsey. Yeah. Um, you look at a really good all-rounder like Gronk, um, you know, who's kind of can, can do it all a little bit, you know. There's some really good tight ends out there, um, a lot of film to watch. Um, so, yeah, just trying to pick up 
little things from the best. You know, watching old tape on Tony Gonzalez. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, you know he's going into the Hall of Fame this year. So he he's a great person to watch. You know, he came from a different sport as well. So kind of had a little little nuances on doing his own thing. You know, and but managed to get the job done. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of guys in the league that I like to take little bits from, um, which is which is, is really helping me. Did you get to speak Tony Gonzalez or have you to this day? No, not yet. I'd really love to get a sit down with him at some point. But I think he lives out in California. He's uh, you know he's he's made his money and he's living living in the sun in uh, in the sunshine all year round. So um, it's uh, yeah he's living the dream really. But yeah, if he's uh, if I ever get a chance to have a, co- uh, a little talk with him, I definitely will because uh, he'd be a great person to, to pick his brains. Atlanta Breakfast Club. We were in there at the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, we'd missed him by an hour. Ah, yeah. Big opportunity Ooh, missed. Man, yeah. Big opportunity yeah, yeah. missed. Um, how are you getting to grips with like the playbook and that kind of stuff as, as OTAs have been and gone and, and training camp ahead of that, that? How are you getting on with adapting to that over the two years you've had and going into this season? It's taken a while. It really has. I can't. I can't lie. It's. It's just everything's just so foreign. You know, when I used to play rugby, I never had to study anything. You know, you'd maybe have a five-minute look at the guy you were playing against and what moves the team ran. And because rugby can only be played a certain number of ways, but. Football is just something else. It's a different beast, you know. And um, just learning the lingo for everything and how everyone speaks, you know, it's that—that that was one challenge. Yeah. Um, and what they were referring to. Such as? Uh, well, it's just even on special teams, they're right. talking about all these different techniques. It's written. It was written one way in the book, and they'll be calling it something else. The coach will be calling it something else, and you're just like, well, I have no idea what that is, but okay. Um, and it's just little, 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 little things like that. And then once you pass that, then you've got to learn what's in the playbook. Um, but it's been good, you know. We've we've had a new OC. I mean, I think testament to how far I've come is we've had a new OC come in this year and yeah, yeah. change things up a bit. And I've managed to pick it up, you know, fairly easily. So, um, you know, it's it's it just shows me the progress I've made in learning foot, just football, yeah, you know, yeah, and being yeah. able to apply it all. So, uh, no, things are going good. Do you have an indication off the back of OTAs or, or chats you've had subsequently of, of where you are in, in terms of, uh, to, you know, to the starting roster? Obviously, FA Abada's come in, hit the ground running in that, in that game he had. That was pretty amazing, obviously, for, for guys coming across from here. Where are you in, in terms of, in relation to that? Yeah, I mean, you know, I know I'm close. Um, you know, I've been told by, you know, a couple of the players, they're like, hey, man, you're, you're really close, keep going, which is really nice to hear when you hear that from the other players yeah, yeah. in such a dog-eat-dog competition yeah, you know sure, yeah. um you know uh, positive feedback from the coaches and but you know the nfl is a fickle thing you know you could be doing everything right and taught and absolutely setting it alight but the ball doesn't come your way no one's going to know so uh, it's one of those you've got to keep yourself grounded i know i'm in a good spot you know i know the playbook i'm in good shape um you know, i've been doing some good things in ota so just got to do the same when the pads come on and we go to the preseason games hopefully the ball comes my way and i'm, I'm doing the right thing so you know that's that's kind of what it is but yeah i mean i'm focused on making it a spot on the on the squad. I mean, for the first maybe year and maybe even the second year, you know, I was probably still in a learning mindset yeah, yeah. where I was still developing. And like now, I really feel like I'm there. You know what I mean? Um, I've done enough in practice. I've done enough in OTAs to show myself. You know, never mind anyone else that you can do this. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, fully focused on making the team. Um, and yeah, hopefully it goes that way. Well, we're all rooting for you anyway. Uh, we we um we spoke to Austin Hooper in the uh, in the Atlanta dressing room would have been season before last mm-hmm. and he only had brilliant things to say about you so i'm hoping <laughs> that's going to stand that's, that's you in good surprise, that's surprising union that. yeah i mean hoops a good guy yeah we got him really well we got a good we got a good uh, room you yeah. know all the tight ends there but yeah hoops a good guy i'm glad he i'm glad he said some nice stuff because uh I, I wouldn't have put my money on it but that's good <laughs>